are here to hear some insights about uh, the new developments in aging. Uh, that's not what we're presenting here. We're presenting the company uh, and um, in Silicon Medicine. So I'm the CEO. And our company is located in Baltimore uh, at the campus of the Johns Hopkins University uh, Emerging Technology Centers. It's a kind of biopark. And we are in artificial intelligence, uh, drug discovery, and aging research. So some of you have read uh, Jim Mellon's book, uh, Cracking the Code, and Fast Forward. So this visionary gentleman has just given a, one of the best lectures on uh, longevity biotechnology and longevity investing I've ever heard. And I've been in this field for a long time. So uh, previously, in 2012, uh, he provided some insights into what's going to happen in technology and biotechnology in general. So talking about increasing longevity, IT biotechnology convergence, emergence of AI, and major advances in immune oncology. So for some investors, it made the billions of dollars because uh, Medivation, one of his bets, uh, got acquired by Pfizer for more than $14 billion. So and, uh, Jim is really visionary in terms of uh, um, uh, how to make uh, uh, really small bets and make big uh, outcomes. But timing is everything. So, and I think the timing is right right now to get into the longevity biotechnology. So uh, in silicon medicine, we uh, sit on the intersection uh, of um, cutting edge artificial intelligence, uh, drug discovery, uh, big data analytics, and longevity research. So we are a longevity biotechnology company with a very credible business model. And our business model is structured around the pharmaceutical companies. So we provide services to the pharmaceutical companies, and we also give them leads. So uh, the pharmaceutical industry has a huge problem. Uh, over the past 20 years, the pharmaceutical R&D has been on a decline. So right now, it takes uh, uh, over two and a half. Whoa, what did I press? Um, uh, right now, it takes uh, over two and a half billion dollars to uh, develop a drug and bring it to the market. So. Um, we really see major declines in pharmaceutical R&D, and we really need to do something with, uh, with it. So as you know, over the past uh, five years, over the past uh, seven years, artificial intelligence has entered into many areas of our lives and uh, um, demonstrated really spectacular performance in uh, uh, image recognition, voice recognition, text recognition, Actually, in 2015, AI systems surpassed human accuracy in uh, image recognition. And those systems perform very well in uh, areas where you have really lots of data. So you really need to have millions of data sets. Uh, and you can quickly validate. So when you're working with images, you can quickly, quickly validate. You can just look at those images that you are uh, generating or that you are predicting uh, or that you are annotating. Uh, and you can quickly get the output. Or in the case of autonomous driving, you get a lot of videos, and you can um, train your system to drive autonomously. And then it will either drive or not drive. But in pharmaceutical industry and biotechnology industry, this validation, this quick validation, is not possible. So you still need to do clinical trials. So what we are doing um, is we're addressing one of the largest and most inefficient markets in the world with lots of data available but uh, in an area where it's, it takes a little bit longer time to validate the predictions. But I'm pretty sure we're going to transform the pharmaceutical industry in a much fancier and better way than Uber has transformed the transportation industry, because it will also make you healthier and uh, solve a lot of global problems. So as you know, uh, the pharmaceutical industry is huge. So the total amount of uh, net sales uh, in the world of pharmaceutical products uh, exceeds a trillion dollars. And over $150 uh, billion um, is being spent on uh, pharmaceutical R&D. But still, uh, pharmaceutical companies have 92% failure in clinical trials. So after the drug is um, uh, discovered, and after it's already confirmed to be efficacious on mice, there is 92% failure rate in humans. So for us, it's a gold mine. So we are kind of like a mining company. We can increase, we're mining those uh, leads, uh, we're mining the data available for those drugs uh, to identify those that have much higher probability of succeeding. And we are doing it for the pharmaceutical companies, and we are doing it for ourselves. 
So uh, we have been already uh, identified by many analysts. And uh, one of the best analytical companies on the market is CB Insights. They group us as uh, uh, the drug discovery company. We're one of the first to uh, be placed on this list. Uh, and uh, one of our key partners is NVIDIA. They are kind of like a monopoly for AI, for hardware. Currently, if you are claiming that you are doing AI, and if you are not working with NVIDIA, you are not doing AI. Because uh, just recently, GPU computing uh, experienced a revolution. And right now, you can get a supercomputer this big, which will give you 30 teraflops of computing power. And I have, uh, in our office, we have uh, a box that's basically just like your refrigerator type style. Um, and it's 160 teraflops now, just installed a couple weeks ago. So that's kind of like Los Alamos uh, supercomputers uh, a while ago. So that, exp that, that industry experienced a revolution. And uh, NVIDIA is presenting us to their customers as one of the kind of pioneers in the uh, drug discovery industry and biotechnology. And we're the first ones to apply really advanced uh, uh, generative adversarial models to generate new molecular structures de novo. We were the first ones to predict the efficacy of the various drugs uh, using transcriptomic data. And we were the first ones to develop uh, deep learned biomarkers and deep learned biomarkers of aging, where we can guess your age with very high precision just using very simple blood biochemistry tests. And now we're doing that on uh, um, uh, transcriptomic data, on genetic data. Uh, we're doing this on your imaging data. And we can do this uh, with your proteomics data and uh, biopsies of various tissues, guessing your age. So this is our company at a glance. We kind of operate uh, um, uh, as a circle. We start with large, massive uh, multi-omics repositories of data. We apply signaling pathway activation algorithms that are sometimes world's best. Uh, you know, there are various competitions for those. We just published our recent signaling pathway activation algorithm in Nature Communications, a really high-profile peer-reviewed journal. Uh, and we smooth out the data coming from um, different so sources into one homogeneous repository. And then we also have one of the largest repositories of curated drug data linked to uh, omics data, uh, essentially genomics, uh, transcriptomics, proteomics data. We are one of the best in deep learning. Some of our algorithms are already used for personalized medicine. And we have lots and lots of industry and academic collaborations. So this is a drug discovery pipeline we have. I'm not going to go into detail. But essentially, we mine a very large uh, repository of data. Uh, to make predictions about the efficacy of uh, small molecules in individual patients and also in population groups. Uh, and then we uh, do in vitro and in vivo validation with partners. So uh, us, as in silico, we don't do experimental work ourselves. We outsource this work to other partners. And then we patent, publish, and license and bring the products to the market. That's our business model. So we provide services to pharma and cosmetics companies. But we also have a lot of our internal research on R&D. So we are switching now more to our own research on R&D, where we generate new molecules and sell them to pharmaceutical companies. Uh, this is our scientific advisory board. All of them are very active. So the chair of the scientific advisory board, Charlie Cantor, used to be the director of the Human Genome Project, one of the luminaries in the field. And Bud Mishra is one of the top people in deep learning. We are very active with them, and we published several peer-reviewed uh, journal, uh, peer-reviewed papers with uh, this gentleman. The way we hire people is also very unique. So we don't have the complete disregard to academic titles. We try to prefer PhDs from really top universities, but we hire people through competitions called hackathons. So if uh, the person cannot really uh, solve a complex problem within 48 hours in a competition, we don't hire that person. And usually, uh, uh, well, in deep learning hackathons, they are a little bit longer because you need to train the deep neural networks. So we allow six days for that. But people still go without food, drink, and uh, uh, any other activities and just work on a problem. And then if they solve the problem, we hire them. Uh, they have an opportunity to uh, work for the company. And we have lots of academic and industry collaborators. We published more than um, uh, 40 papers since our inception. We published. Uh, 23 last year in peer-reviewed journals. Uh, and the way we partner with pharmaceutical companies, so we have a large portfolio of leads, so uh, small molecules that we believe are efficacious in multiple diseases and also in aging. 
uh, and we uh, uh, get a lot of data around a compound. Uh, we try to pre-validate it internally. Uh, then we validate it with some of our uh, external partners, uh, contract research organizations in China, France, Switzerland, US, to ensure that the compound is uh, actually performing as well as we are predicting it to perform. And then we are taking those leads, already pre-validated leads, to partners, and they do more preclinical validation and then take them to clinic. But this process takes a very long time. That's why we also decided to go into nutraceuticals. So nutraceuticals are a natural products. Some of those are naturally occurring molecules that uh, are acting pretty much the same as pharmaceuticals. It's just uh, since they are natural, you can sell them over the counter. And we've partnered with a company called Life Extension in the United States. Uh, they have over 350,000 subscribers to their catalogs. So a lot of people are taking those products. And they are operating since uh, 1980. Uh, uh, th those customers are very sophisticated. They know what they're taking. They read the magazine, uh, Life Extension magazine that they published since 1981. Uh, and um, they're very committed to Life Extension. So some of them are also taking blood tests, also offered by Life Extension. Uh, and in our case, we launched this nutraceutical. In about half a year, we will also have blood-based data uh, about the predicted efficacy of those compounds on aging. So we would be able to confirm that it's a really anti-aging supplement. Uh, plus, get a lot of other anti-aging effects uh, and uh, possibly other uh, positive side effects of those molecules. So if you go to geroprotector.com, you can already buy our product. And it's formulated by Ancilico Medicine. I highly recommend you uh, the book uh, Juvenescence, because again, what you've seen today as a presentation by Jim Mellon, you know, I myself, I do a lot of public talks about specific areas of aging and specific technologies. I cannot do what he does. He looks uh, into the future and makes uh, very bold, very uh, predictive um, uh, statements uh, that none other investor would be able to do. So uh, one of the investors who invested in us early also uh, was visionary enough um, the same level uh, and did this kind of talks, but that was the first time I've, uh, in the human history where I heard a very comprehensive, longevity-focused business talk. So what you've uh, witnessed today, you witnessed history. And I hope that you buy this book, uh, you read it, you analyze it, and also you get this brochure and participate in the competition where you can get uh, uh, a one-year supply of Jera Protector. Uh, and you can measure your blood tests. I also run a conference on aging in Basel. I think it is uh, either uh, very cheap or, very, uh, or free to attend. We're not sure this year. It's part of uh, EMBO. It's fourth annual congress on uh, uh, practical applications of aging research to drug discovery. And um, it's September 12th to 13th, followed by the Artificial Intelligence Conference um, uh, September 13th to 14th in Basel. It's one of the largest industry conferences uh, you can attend. So I highly encourage you to do that. If you are interested in our company or if you're interested in investing, contact Juvenescence, contact Jim Mellon, and um, Man Bio, one of his funds. Um, you're welcome to co-invest with them in Encilico. Thank you so much, and uh, have a very prosperous and lengthy life.